All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Anthony Francisco. Um, I have with me Mr. Gerard as well, uh, my my colleague from Jenks Middle School, and I want to welcome all of you taking the time out to be with us uh, on this Saturday uh, night or evening, rather. And I want to thank you. I want to commend you for your commitment uh, to family engagement and for being part of this process. And we're so excited uh, about this upcoming uh, year. There may be some people coming in. You may see me pause once in a while to let them in or look at the chat box. So, all right. Um, I'm just going to ask if everyone could mute your mics and that way there won't be any background noise, okay? Let me see if I can. All right, we still have some parents coming in, so let's just wait. Okay. All right, so someone has their mic on, so we're going to have to see if we can find out. All right. So if you just joined us, uh, welcome. This is uh, the Jenks family orientation. We're just waiting a, a, just a minute or two for other families to join us. Uh, there's still people coming in. Please stand by. We also have Nurse Morrow with us from Jenks. Nice to I'm see her here with us. All right, let me see here if I can. Hello. All right. Well. All right. All right, let's get started. All right, if you just joined us, my name is Dr. Francisco, and I want to welcome you to Jenks Middle School's Family Orientation. I ask you if you can kindly mute your mic so that way there's no background noise. Okay. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, you should be able to see on your screen, uh, welcome to Jenks, all right? And these pictures are actually from Jenks. You see on the top left-hand side, you have students that are working in collaborative groups. Um, we believe in high academic standards, uh, academic achievement, and that's, that's obviously our, the center. Our goal is to advance, increase our uh, academic achievement. And we're going to talk about that a little later. And then on the bottom there, on the bottom left, you see uh, the principal, Letsureski, is in a social studies class. And Mr. Rebusini, the social studies teacher, has actually uh, invited him as a guest speaker to his class outside because they were talking about ancient Roman games. And this one's bocce. This is an Italian, Italian game. We see those balls there. And, you know, Mr. Letsureski, that's you can't get more Italian than that. You hear that last name? Uh, and then you see uh, next to that picture, we have uh, events at the school. This was a barbecue that we had. Uh, to the right of that, we have a student working in one of our adjustable desks. Now, not all classes have these adjustable desks, uh, but uh, this classroom, we're experimenting with them, all right? And we have clubs. We have sports clubs. We have science clubs trying to get a chess club started. 
Um, and there up on the top right hand side, we have JJ, our mascot. All right. Uh, para los que están mirando este video, uh, por favor, um, ustedes pueden, este, 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 este video, esta presentación está siendo uh, grabada. Y así que ustedes, si están viendo este video y está en la parte en inglés, avance rápidamente a una hora en la orientación de video y comenzará la uh, parte en español de este video. All right, just, um, so, let's go on to the next slide. At Jenks, we have, this is our motto, be here, behave, and be a high achiever. And you see uh, JJ, the Jaguar there, JJ, that's his name. He's a Jenks mascot, and that's what he's always reminding us, to be here, behave, and be a high achiever. Now, if you were in the middle school, uh, the elementary school, they probably had something like be respectful, responsible, and ready to, ready to learn, right? Well, we had to come up with our own. And... And I can tell you that I've never seen this uh, saying anywhere. Uh, I think Jenks is unique. Uh, I think we came up with this at the school, and we're unique in this. So uh, it's to build the culture. And we're going to talk about these three, these three expectations today. When does school start this year? What, what day does it start? I'm going to give someone a chance, uh, one of our participants, our family members, to unmute. You don't need my permission. Just go ahead, unmute, and tell us when is the first day of school. I'm going to test you at the end of this. <laughs> the 31st of August. Excellent. You get an A plus on on that one. <laughs> Good job. Uh, so that's the last Wednesday, okay, of this month. So that's it's quickly approaching. Um, another person. When does class start every day. Let's see if we can get someone to answer that. You can unmute your mic. 8 a.m. Yes, you got it. 8 a.m. Good job to both of you. <laughs> 8 a.m. So you'll, you'll hear Dr. Francisco often say to students that uh, are coming in after 8 o'clock, uh, school starts at 8, so don't be late. <laughs> um, it's a, it's a you know, when, when students come after 8 o'clock uh, and it becomes a, it's chronic, uh, it's a huge uh, disruption to the teaching and learning and does a disservice to not only the, the, the teacher, uh, but also the students. So obviously things happen. You know, once in a while, you know, bomb didn't go off. When it, we're not talking about that. We're talking about when every day the student is chronically absent. We have some of them, and we want to set those expectations from the beginning so as to start the year uh, with clear expectations. So be here, behave, and be a high achiever. Parents, this is our parent advisory committee um, chair or president, President Phoebe. And she has a message for you. Uh, one of our goals is to increase family engagement. Now, we have 700 students. So 700 times 2, right? We're talking 1,400, um, you know, parents. So we can't, it's not acceptable to have two or three or four uh, parents uh, leading the parent group. We need your participation, all right? And the meetings... Uh, last year, uh, parents met um, uh, two times uh, a month, and so I'm going to uh, play a video f uh, from her, a, uh, a video, uh, it will say some old times, that's going to probably change, all right? Um, so I just want you to contemplate that beforehand. But actually, let me back up. I have a couple of guests here with me today, and I just remembered. Uh, I have Mr. Gerard, okay, and he's going to tell you who he is. Uh, we worked closely together last year to uh, around the culture of the school and community engagement and around attendance, all right, and also Nurse Mora. She's here. Now, um, M Nurse Mora, um, maybe we can maybe jump to her slide right away, or does she want to wait? for approximately 20 minutes. Uh, it's up to her. Um, 
I mean, I can go first. I don't mind going right now, saying what I need to say, if that's okay with you. Okay, that's fine. Let me. That's that's fine. This, ladies and gentlemen and students, this is Adia. Now we affectionately call her Nurse Mora, okay? <laughs> but she's Mrs. Boragine, and uh, she's going to uh, talk to you a little bit about what the expectations are uh, at Jenks Middle School. All right. Okay, so I, I don't want to take up too much time um, with in regards to medical, um, but I just there's a few things that I want to touch base with. Um, in keeping with the first uh, theme, be here, I think it's really important that our students are in school, and I know the last couple of years have been really challenging for everybody, and we're all wondering what we can expect this year, and we really don't know yet. Right now, the protocols are the same as they were at the end of last year, but I'm sure that could change at any given time throughout the year as far as mask mandates and, and, and such. Um, so basically, I'm just asking that, you know, we keep the lines of communication open and that if your student is going to be out of school um, for any reason, that you give me a call and let me know um, what's going on. If you think they've been exposed to COVID or if they're displaying any symptoms, um it's 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 much easier for me to advocate for them and if you keep me informed as to the reason they're out of school uh it's really important that they be in school uh, unless they're sick um if i know what's going on it's easier for me to advocate for them communicate with the teachers um possibly get you know arrange to get their assignments made up um if they have uh, any anything that develops throughout the school year in regards to chronic chronic health concerns, if they're going to be out more than one day, it's helpful for me if I have uh, documentation from their pediatrician. Um, so all this helps me to know what's going on with the student if they're out of school for any medical related absences. Um, as Dr. Francisco said, it's really important that students be in school when they're feeling well, um, and we don't know what's going to happen this year. So please keep me informed as to what's going on with your student if they're going to be out of school for any medical related absence. We do have a question. Sure. It's related around um, the process when a student has, has been um, uh, found to have COVID-19 and what are the processes years prior uh, during the pandemic. Um, there was quarantine and there was this protocol. And so there was, the parent was inquiring as to what uh, what's, what has been updated, what's new in terms of uh, if a student in, while in school is found to have COVID or maybe they found, they took a test outside at home right. and the student has COVID, what is the process? Yep. Presently, the, the, uh, the protocols are the same as they were at the end of last year. Is a five-day quarantine if you test po if your student tests positive for COVID outside of school. Uh, we have a meeting coming up with the Department of Health um, this coming week, but as far as I know, right now those are the that's the protocol. If your student is sick while they're in school with any COVID-related symptoms, um, you'll be getting a call from me to, and you you'll come and pick them up. If they've had COVID and they're coming back to school uh, after having COVID, they're required to wear a mask for approximately a week. Uh, up to 10 days after having COVID. The protocols have not changed. If students are exposed in school uh, to another student that's tested positive, we'll be doing the monitor to stay program again as of now. You'll get a call from me that your student was exposed and then you would we would look at the individual situation. You would decide if you wanted to monitor to stay. I would keep an eye on them in school for symptoms you knowing that they've been exposed at school would be alert if they wake up the next morning and say they have a sore throat you would get in touch with me and you would keep the student home from school if they're exposed outside of the school it's a it's a five-day quarantine as of now that's the same policy as it was at the end of last year i believe things could change during um you know intense outbreaks if that happens again um right now there's no mask mandate that could change again very easily too. You know, we don't really know what the year is gonna bring, but right now it's a five day quarantine for COVID positive. They don't have to test negative to return to school because you can test positive for COVID up to 30 days. So we don't we don't require that. We just, 
they just have to be symptom free without the use of any over the counter medications for 24 hours before returning to school. Okay, so they've had COVID, they tested positive, they're out of school sick for five days. Um, you know, if they're still very sick, running a low grade fever, complaining of sore throat, you would still keep them home from school until those symptoms are gone. I hope I answered your question. Do you have any, did I answer your question? Yes, yes. Okay, okay it, it's just very difficult to know what's gonna happen this year. I think we're all kind of wondering. All right, um, well, yeah. thank you very much, Nurse Mora. We appreciate okay. that. I only had one more um, thing sure. that I wanted to talk about and then I'm gonna be done with my portion. Sure, um, go ahead. As far as vaccinations go, um, the DOH is, is encouraging students to be fully vaccinated. Um, not, I'm not talking about COVID, I'm talking about other vaccines that, that are required, um, you know, childhood immunizations. Um, that's being stressed even more right now. We, the GOH doesn't want another outbreak of anything along with COVID. So, um, you know, if your child has received any vaccines over the summer or you take them throughout the school year, please have your updated vaccination physical form. Please drop me off a copy in my office. I don't have that information unless you give it to me. I know some people think that I have that information, but unless you bring me a copy, of your child's updated vaccination in physical form. I do not have that information. And that, that bottom portion gives the, your child, your student, the permission to participate in school sports, team, uh, team sports. The doctor signs off right there. So it's important that I get that information. So um, if your child is missing any vaccines, you'll probably be getting a letter from me specifically stating what they're missing. We hold clinics throughout the year so they can be vaccinated in school. You'll get the form, you can sign right next to what's needed and send it back to me with your student. If you'd like to do that, that's always an option. It's there for your convenience. Um, but making sure that our students are vaccinated and have the necessary required vaccines is something that's really important. So, um, you know, if your child is, is missing, is non-compliant with any vaccines, you'll be getting a letter, okay? Any questions there? Well, nurse, you um, need nurse Mara sure sorry i did have a question for you um i'm new still to rhode island um mm -hmm. from massachusetts um we go to blackstone currently um mm -hmm. but where how would we pertain the information because he's interested in sports how would we what is the exact form that you need us to get from their physician it's a, called a vaccination and physical form so if you call there and okay. talk to the, yeah talk to the clinic or the you know direct the pediatrician, uh, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And they'll, okay, they'll perfect. I'll make a, co a copy of it and send the original home to you. So I just need okay. a copy of it. Yep, good question. Perfect, quick. thank you. No problem. Um, Nurse Mora, uh, will anything be coming fr through from you uh, to parents through email or text about what you said, like in a synopsis, a short brief outline so that or something written down so they can remember? Sure, we'll send something. I'll make okay. sure I send something. Yep. Okay. We'll do that. Sounds good. All right. And so uh, we're going to do the Spanish version of this uh, same presentation at seven o'clock. Um, everyone's invited if you want to learn Spanish. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Nurse Mora. We appreciate that. Actually, Nurse Mora, uh, will you be holding on to inhalers or medications in your office like we're used to in the elementary school? No. Here unless you would like me to. There, that is a choice in middle school. Um, you know, no. students in middle school do have the option of carrying the fast, ass, fast acting rescue inhaler on themselves. If they're responsible, if they're not gonna lose it, if they're not gonna, you know, take it out in the classroom and <laughs> we've had some situations. So that's individual. I mean, I'm more than happy to hold it for students and they can come in and use it. And if they need to use it throughout the day, they will not be penalized for that, for being out of class. They'll be allowed to come down and use that if you feel that, you know, they're not quite there yet as far as being responsible for carrying it themselves. I do have students that keep it with me. I also have a lot of students in the 6th, 7th, and 8th that carry it on themselves. So that's kind of an individual thing, but that option is there. Right. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nurse Mora. And we have with us also Mr. Gerard. 
and he works with me very closely. Mr. Gerard, are you there? All right, looks like Mr. Gerard left. All right, so let's continue. Um, so, uh, be here, behave, and be a high achiever. Uh, this is our parent advisory committee um, president, President Phoebe, and we need you as a parent, we need your involvement. So I'm gonna, just going to play a video from her on our uh, parent advisory committee Facebook page. Please, if you could uh, become a member, we because there's there are some announcements there for parents and guardians and caretakers that uh, we, you know, we share with the parents. So let me see if I can get her volume up there. All right. I'm just going to ask you if you can just mute your mic, please, as I play this. Let's see. I hear one person's mic on. Let me see. There we go. Thank you very much. Okay. I got it. Okay. I thought you were just going in here. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll wait. On, we'll, we're going to hold up on that. Here's uh, Mr. Gerard. Mr. Gerard is going to speak to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, students. I'm sorry. I was on, I was on mute. I'm sorry. Hi, my name is Mr. Gerard. I work with Dr. Francisco, and, and I am a student support specialist at Jenks Middle School. Uh, part of my job is dealing with um, school climate, uh, attendance, and uh, mostly um, I work closely with the sixth grade. I will be working with uh, the sixth grade advisories, um, working with them, dealing with the transition from elementary school into middle school and self-advocacy. Uh, we will be passing out um, very important emails via uh, uh, a magnet provided by the school to take home to all sixth graders and new students. Uh, my biggest concern, number one, will be attendance. I'll also be working with uh, very closely with students who are having problems with a very, very serious issue of bullying in school. If uh, for whatever reason your student feels bullied or any problems at home, Please don't hesitate to email me or Dr. Francisco, and we will address that issue at school, especially it affects attendance or student performance. Thank you. And your email, Mr. Gerard, is what? I'll put it in the chat box. Okay, it's it's D Gerard. I'm sorry, Gerard D A. That's with an I, Dr. Francisco. G I R A R D D A at P S D R I dot net. Okay. Many people, many people get the D A wrong. Okay, so make sure the A. That my email will be on the magnet. So Perfect. Nice any issues, right please, Any issues at home, especially dealing with students who don't want to come to school for whatever reason, email me and we can address it at school. The biggest problem we have at school is if we don't know there's a problem at home, we can't address something we don't know about. Okay, we've had tremendous success dealing with students who have been issues at school especially if they're having problems with other students dealing with a conflict or some type of bullying situation, uh, we can address that at the school. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gerard. We appreciate that. All right. Well, let's go back to now. Um, everyone can keep uh, keep their mics off. That'll be great. Uh, we have a video from our president here. Let me just get this. middle school parents and family. I'm Phoebe, the president of the Parent Advisory Committee. Our committee is here to represent you, the parents, and family of our Joseph Jenks Middle School students. The committee meets every other Monday at 5.30 p.m. and usually the information is broadcast through emails and phone calls a few days prior to the meeting dates. We're looking for parent participation so hoping to see everyone join the meetings. We are also open to feedback, questions, and if you are interested in joining the parent leadership panel, please contact the school. You can reach out to Dr. Francisco. You can also email us directly or reach out via social media. Um, so we are looking forward to seeing everyone in our upcoming meetings. Thank you. All right. Um, that was actually a video, but I 
anything else to share. <laughs> okay, let me see here. Make sure I get this right. Okay. I'm going to share my entire screen. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me all right? All right. Very good. EB on the screen. Nurse Mora, can you see a, uh, a slide on the screen? Uh, presently, I do not see a slide. Okay, thank you. Let me. Uh, oh, I see. There we go. All right. Yeah, you should be able to see it now. All right. So, parents, we need your uh, participation. You should see her uh, picture there. Um, and uh, our Facebook page. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to put it in the chat chat box. Uh, if you can kindly, if you're on Facebook already, if you can kindly become a member. We'd appreciate that. Um, all you know, there's a lot of pertinent information regard you know that's relative to parents. Um, you know the agendas that the parent meet for, for the parent meetings. They're all there. Um, this is where I got her. Uh, you know, Phoebe, President Phoebe's uh, video from. Um, so, wait, hold on a second. I gotta switch this. Uh, what's going on here? It's like my internet connection is a little bit crazy here. Hmm. All right. So if if you so she said you'd meet maybe. Uh, well, last last academic year, President Phoebe said that they met two times a month. You may say, oh, well, I can't meet, you know, I can't go to a meeting, an hour, hour and a half meeting, you know, two times a month. Um, so um, we, you know, a, a reasonable expectation would be once a month, okay? Um, but even then, you know, things happen, things pop up, uh, you know, we're all busy. Um, what does the family engage, what does the parent advisory committee do? Formerly the PTO, parent teacher organization, or PTA, parent teacher uh, association, uh, we found that um, we needed your voice. We, the, the, through your voice, through the surveys, parents wanted their voice to be heard um, about a different, um, on different topics, whether it's uh, management, whether it's teaching and learning, fundraising, social events, uh, things of that nature. So uh, we're going to have a lot. If you can't, you say, well, I can't attend all the meetings uh, with the parent group, but you can still be uh, involved. We're going to, you're going to receive a lot of surveys this year, a lot. There'll be surveys going to your text, to your email, and some may be three questions, may, you know, take you less than five minutes. Others, like the state, uh, survey we take we actually take that data and we have a parent um, we hold parent meetings uh, workshops every month and one of those topics of the workshop is the survey data from the state and parent voice so it may take 20 minutes 25 minutes but please we reuse that we do use that information to make decisions on on uh, in our school and to build the, the climate the culture of the school all right so, so how do we, how do you stay informed? Well, someone is requesting entry. Okay, sorry about that. How, how do you stay informed? Well, we have a uh, Jenks website, uh, a new website. Um, so you'll see two websites right now uh, up and running, but um, we're, we're really moving to to this one here, which is josephjenks.bramjam.com. You can even go to your Google meets uh, Google uh, search and just type in uh, Joseph Jenks Middle School. But what I'll do is I'll uh, put it in the chat box for you. All right. I apologize for the screen mirroring. Um, so here you'll find uh, that 
this information here to the left, these are actual links, videos from teachers, uh, expert teachers doing the presentations, um, calendars, you know, uh, lunch form. Uh, the lunch form is very important because if you, when you fill that out, we actually receive federal money uh, for the school. If you don't fill that out, then we lose out on that money, and we really need it as a Title I school. Um, so uh, I'd like to play for you uh, a video from our own students here. Uh, it's the Jenks Welcome, all right? And And this is talking, this is uh, students produced by the students. Let's see. Yeah. All right. I hope you enjoyed that video from our students. Um, all right, so that's our Jenks website. Uh, the face. Uh, you know, this is, you know, it's really easy to. Uh, you know, get information, you know, we'll make, we might show things that are happening in the school, um, you know, student, students engaging in work and uh, different programs. Um, and 
you know, teachers, that's a teacher right there, Mr. Rebusini. Um, so, and this is the, uh, this is Dr. McWilliams, our superintendent. She came to visit us uh, during the, um, during the summer, during when we had the enrichment programs. Uh, so please, yeah, it, Jenks MS1, all right? And also PSDRI.net, which is the district website uh, for our district plan, strategic plan, uh, and also S'mores newsletter. Uh, so I'll, we'll send that out on a monthly basis, okay? All right. Now these are, these are our administrators. To the left, you, you can see Principal Latsareski shaking hands with a student who is moving up to secondary school. There's high school. In the middle, you have uh, Assistant Principal Loughborough. We call him Mr. Luff. Uh, affectionately, and he's he's really a funny guy. He's he tries to connect with students through humor. You'll hear him laughing a lot, and look at his tie. I don't know if you can see his tie. Anyone see his tie there? What what is in that tie? Let's see. I don't know. Is there a student online here can see what's in his tie? Yeah. You can take your mic. You can you can unmute your mic. Can you see that? What is that? Any students with us today? <laughs> All right. Well, you can let me know if you, if you, if you happen to, maybe you're having some trouble with your microphone. But if you happen to see what's on that on his tie, you know, printed on his tie, let me know. And that's me right there on the right-hand side, Dr. Francisco. Welcome to Jenks, everyone. Now, be here, behave, and be a high achiever. Um, can, can everyone see that clearly? All right, very good. So be here, behave, and be high achiever. What, what, what does that mean? So we're going to break that down. These are the, these are the uh, behavioral expectations, academic expectations, uh, social expectations. So be here uh, means having no more than one unexcused absence a month. So by, or by June, the last day of June, you have less than 17. Our school improvement plan calls for reducing chronic absenteeism, okay, down to 15%. Where were we last, uh, last academic year? We're at 35. So please, uh, you need to be here at school, all right? Uh, email your teachers to stay on, on track and arrive early. Remember what we said, class... Class starts at 8, so don't be late. And then be here, behave, be a high achiever. Behave, what does that mean? So we have a cell phone policy in every classroom you're going to find on the door. You know those funky, like, uh, hangers that go on the door and they take up the whole door and you put your shoes in there? Well, it's, it's going to be similar. This uh, classroom door cell pouch, you're going to put that in there, your cell phone in there, and you're going to focus on academics, okay? So parents, do not expect uh, your student to answer your chat uh, or your, your calls, okay? Um, students are going to be expected to use the cell phone responsibly. Look, look at there in the second one, second bullet there, responsibly. So they can get in contact with you and talk with you during passing. Uh, every, was it almost every what, 45, 50 minutes and during lunch. So that's fair. I hope you're in agreement with us. Uh, we want to have the same expectation for everyone. All right. Treat others the way you would like to be treated. The golden rule. And this is from our boys town. So Bo boys town, we'll talk a little bit about boys town, New England later on with Miss, uh, Miss, Miss G, uh, use a calm voice when you're speaking. Be here, behave, and be a high achiever. What does being high achiever mean? It means ask at least one question in, 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 your, in each class, okay? Or ask for help. Don't stay, don't stay quiet, all right? Now, that doesn't mean you have to ask the teacher all the time, you know, the question, or ask the teacher for help all the time. You, uh, if you, uh, we, we use collaborative groupings, uh, so ask the person next to you, that person is working in your group. All right. Ask for help. Uh, do your homework. Focus all your attention on the task. Don't worry about the cell phone that's in the cell phone, the door pouch. Okay. 
and help others learn. Now, this is important. When you help others learn, students, this is a form of metacognition. That means you're aware of how you learn. And when you are at that level, being able to explain something to someone else re relative to the, the lesson, you're actually helping yourself crystallize the learning. Once you learn something, it's really difficult to unlearn. So um, help others learn. All right, parents, very important here, the forms uh, that we'll be sending home uh, with the students, emergency form. This is It's important that we have your current address uh, and your both parents' cell phone numbers and email addresses. The email address is very important because we use the email address to give you access to your Skyward. I'm going to talk about Skyward later, a little later on. Everyone, all students are already opted in. So we have already have your permission to use your child's video or picture and publish it on our websites and social media and use it for um, educational purposes. Now, if you don't want that to happen, you have to fill out this opt out form. Also, this lunch form, very important. I, uh, we sent this out to you a couple of weeks ago and we apologize at first it wasn't up and running There's some kinks, but now it's up and running. Um, you can find it again on a on our website, um, Joseph JosephJenks.bramjam.com. Uh, it'll be on the left hand side. It's really easy. It's really easy. It's not going to take too much of your time. You scroll down right here, okay? Lunch form, and uh, you just you know it. it It'll, it's really easy. It's, it's digital. It's just going to ask you to put in your, your, your zip code, you know, I imagine it's 02860, um, and just select Pawtucket, and you begin the application process, um, and that's it. And, and I want to stress, we want to stress this because, again, this is tied to federal money that we get every, for every application that we submit. We have, so what, just imagine uh, when we... Oh, a percentage of stu uh, families, if they don't fill this out, we're, we don't receive those funds, okay? And we want, and those funds go back to the students, all right, in the operation, you know, to, 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 to build the school, all right, for our services. Um, school Compact, so this is also on our website, but you're going to get it through, through email. Um, we're going to ask you to, it's basically a, a, a compact, what is it? It's a, it's an agreement, uh, between all of us, um, the students, the staff, the parents, um, and it was actually delivered. It was actually constructed by all of us, uh, and and so the school compact um, says, as a school, we agree to; as parents, we agree to; as students, we agree to. Just so in the email, you're going to get this. Just you're going to have to click after you read it. I read it, and I'm in agreement with it. Okay. Now. This is important because, again, we 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 spoke about our goals, our school-wide goals: increase English language arts uh, proficiency and also our math or um, numeracy goal. But another uh, explicit goal that we have is the attendance goal. Last academic year, we had a 35 percent of our students were chronically absent. So that's you know, to us, that's unacceptable because when a student is not in school, there's a correlation between attendance and academic achievement. Um, so if we, you know, let's just do the math. If we have 700 students, okay, and, uh, you know, you just take 30, 35%, okay, our goal is to get down to 15%, take 35%, right? Um, that's 245 students who are absent 10% or more. That is, they're, they're, they have two or more absences a month. We want to reduce that, okay, that number. So 700 students, we want to reduce that to 15. That's our goal this year. And we need parents. We need students. We need your, we need your club. So we want to get we, we'd like to get under 100, actually, you know, if that's possible. But 105 and under, uh, because our numbers change, you know, we have we may have uh, 600, 650 students, 700, 710, whatever it's going to be. But this is generally where we want to be, and we need your, your help to do it. Now, we're a Title I school, okay? 
Um, that means we have a high percentage of disadvantaged students um, based on socioeconomic status. Um, now, coupled with our intervention, so um, we've, the state, Brown Department of Education, um, we're under their intervention status. That means they're intervening and they're monitoring us. And so we want to get out of that status. You know, when you have the state, you know, monitoring you, telling you how wh how you have to run, you know, your school. I, th I think that the parents, when you partner with us and we all come together, I think that, you know, we we can do this. We can actually do this and get out of intervention status and raise the academic achievement of our students. OK, um, but we all have to collectively understand and come together and do and to do this. All right. Now, uh, the district policy around attendance, and this is on in the school board, uh, uh, actually on our website, not our website, the, the Pawtucket Public Schools website. It's a district policy, and it says that extended vacations are highly di discouraged. So please look at the calendar and find out when those, when school is not in session and plan accordingly please we need you to do that um all right and chronic absenteeism uh it's defined as missing how many days unexcused let's see if we can find someone who remembers how many days okay does it take for someone to get on the chronic absenteeism list anyone you can unmute yourself let me see who is paying attention to that number. <laughs> I think you said once a month. All right. So if you're absent two times or more a month, you will be on the chronic absenteeism list. So our goal is to be under two or one or zero. Okay. All right. Thank you for your participation. We appreciate that. It takes a lot of bravery to do that. All right. Uh, when you're absent, what should you do? Email all your teachers. Students, if you don't know how to use uh, Gmail yet, all right, go to our website or go to YouTube and uh, learn how to send an email. All right, you send, you can send one email, type all the teachers, type in the first like three letters of their last name and they'll populate and just press enter. And Nurse Mora, if it's going to be for medical reason. All right. So if you know you're going to be absent, you have an appointment, say, you know, dear teachers, I have a medical appointment, you know, um, on Wednesday. And I just wanted to, you know, and you can do that while you're in school because you already know. Right. But it's just so that you can it'll be a record and they can respond to you. Say, is there any like work outside of the classroom I could do so I don't fall behind? All right. Uh, a wake up call. Now, this wake up call is a service to you, student, that if your parents would like us to call your cell phone in the morning. Uh, we can put it for seven o'clock. And now this is just supplemental. This is not going to cure, you know, a, a chronic tardiness or chronic absenteeism, but just another tool that you can use. And, uh, you know, one thing about uh, alarm clocks, uh, and I like to, this is a strategy that has worked for many students. And this is something that we share with families. Many students say, I, you know, we've had to conference with students that were chronically tardy coming into school after eight o'clock. And we asked them, so how do you get up in the morning? I say, oh, I depend on my mom or I depend on my dad or I depend on my, my sibling, my brother or sister. Well, here at Jenks Middle School, we're trying to equip students to be uh, independent because we're, we're trying to prepare you to, to get into the high school. In the high school, you know, you need those skills. You need to be independent with certain skills. So you say, oh, I use my cell phone. Well, the problem with the cell phone is that the charge, sometimes it's not charging. It, you know, it goes, you know, it doesn't ring because it's shut off. So what we say is buy an alarm clock. OK, you can buy one of those alarm clocks, plug them into the wall and they'll never be without charge. And by the way, we suggest not putting it next to you uh, on the nightstand, right on the night table, right next to your bed but put it on the opposite side of the room. 
Why do we say that? Because then it forces you to get out of bed and plant your feet on the floor. And once that happens, then you, you, you really need to get up and the blood starts moving. All right. Transportation. There was a question uh, that was sent to us um, if transportation is provided. Yes. So students who live more than a mile from the school, most likely, if you apply, you will get um, transportation. Uh, someone's asking to come in. Uh, now we have our own, the district has its own transportation department. So you can go to PSDRI, um, P Pawtucket School District's website. And at the top tab, they handle all transportation issues. If you have a question about your they'll come, uh, about it. Uh, also, they'll uh, send to you your, um, your, your bus stops, okay? Uh, your bus pass, if you would. Um, so if you want to apply for transportation, you have to uh, deal directly with the transportation district's uh, transportation department. If you live less than an, uh, a mile or right on that mile, um, chances are you're not going to get uh, transportation, okay, for, uh, you know, um, by the school department. So plan accordingly. Be here, behave, and be a high achiever. All right. From sixth grade all the way up to 12th grade, you're going to get what's called a guidance counselor, a person that is for you. It's, it's this person here is going to guide you through the secondary school process. Okay. In elementary school, you may not have had this person to help you as a support uh, person, but this person guides you. They can guide you in the right direction when you have a problem at the classroom level that the teacher can't solve. They uh, also deal with your schedule because you have different uh, classes you, you might take. Maybe the class is uh, too easy, right? And you need advanced classes. Well, then you're going to, you know, ask them, hey, you know, I, I, I you know, I've been at this in this class for, you know, six weeks, uh, two months, and it's just too easy. I'm getting A pluses. I'm doing all this. It's just too easy for me. I, I can go to sleep in that class. Can you put me in a more advanced class? They help you solve problems. Okay. Now. So if you have an issue at the at the classroom level, you're not going to run to right to the uh, uh, school administrator, you know, um, assistant principals or the principal. Um, you're going to go to your teacher first, and then you're going to go if they're unable to solve the issue. Then you go to your guidance counselor. Please note this down: Travasos A at psdri.net and Rahani J at psdri.net. You should be meeting with them or in contact with them. I would say at least once a month. And that's the advice I give my own children. Okay. Um, so that way you, you get into the rhythm of, you know, put it in a reminder, you know, your calendar reminder, a task reminder, because when you get to high school, you're going to need them. You're really going to need them because they're going to get you ready for college and career, uh, for world of work. Boys Town, we start a new partnership with them parents and they, uh, this is uh, Ms. G with her cute little dog. Isn't that cute? Um, her name is, um, Ms. G, and she's a school support specialist, and she works to decrease negative behaviors um, and increase those positive behaviors in the school. And she does this by utilizing what uh, Boys Town calls the behavior intervention techniques, and it's developed by them. And uh, she's trained specifically to work with students, staff, uh, and families. We had uh, um, a full day professional development with, uh, with Boys Town. Um, when they first came, uh, I want to say around April at the end of uh, sort of the end of last academic year. And then we also had like follow up uh, professional development uh, to ensure wraparound support and consistency throughout the school, the, throughout uh, Jenks Middle School. And so she's also going to provide uh, workshops for you as parents. Uh, she already started, she already did one uh, at the end of the year. Um, and parents, they loved it. It was about resources for for families and parents on how to deal you know with how to uh navigate the summer all right and resources and what what's out there and um you know sh they may have uh things related to behavior and how to handle uh negative behaviors and how to turn them into positive behaviors um and i, I could tell you firsthand as a parent i i found i find their um their professional techniques re they really work okay all right. Um, now, do you have access to Skyward? Parents, 
do not use, we suggest, do not use your child's Skyward account. Use your own Skyward account because it's much more comprehensive. And if you have another child that's in the district, um, it's all in one account. So if you don't have Skyward access for their, because it has their grades, their progress uh, reports, has all their courses, all their assignments, it has discipline uh, information from the system principals, it has um, also attendance Okay, so you need that. Just email or call us, 729-6520. All right, your feedback. Well, that's all from me. Um, I'm interested to hear from students right now. And if you're a former parent or student, like to hear about your – we'd like to um, – uh, right now, if you could share some positive things about Jinx Middle School for some students, because there may be some parents and new students here from sixth grade uh, that want to hear your voice. But before – so don't leave. Uh, while you're thinking about what to say, uh, I want you to, I'm going to put this in the chat box. And I want you to, it's a link. I want you to answer two questions for us, okay? Was this uh, helpful? And two, what can we do better the next time? So you're going to come to this form, all right? It's a, it's just two questions, okay? Did you see that in your screen? All right. And uh, I'm going to post it into the chat box, all right? All right. So if you have any questions... Yeah, for me right now, or want to share, I'm going to stop pres presenting, want to share um, positive expense experiences here at uh, Jenks Middle School, I think that would be helpful for, for everyone to listen. We have uh, three minutes, okay, so our, our Spanish session will start in three minutes, but just feel free to unmute yourself, appreciate that. And right now, uh, you're also going to click on the chat box, that link, and you answer those two questions for us. Hello. Hi. Hi. Am I allowed to ask a question here, or should I type it? Sure. You can. You can ask the question. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, if it's, if it's was... specific about your specific uh, a student, um, no. we can, if it's general, something general that everyone can use, then sure, go ahead. I was wondering if there's a school supply list that is available for us parents. Um, do you guys have one? That's an excellent question. So um, yes. Um, sixth grade, you have your specific list, okay, and that is going to be posted on our website, but also this Wednesday, all sixth grade parents and students, this Wednesday at 10 in the morning, you're going to get that list, you're going to meet your teachers, you're going to do a tour of the, the facility, the, the complex or the campus, um, so yes. How about for seventh graders? So seventh grade, um, when the student gets to, um, on the first day, the, the first uh, week, each teacher has a different supply list, okay? Um, so uh, different requirements. So they're going to share that when the students come into their classroom. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, um, I have a question. Um, Regarding what she was saying about this and school um, list, um, my son had one from school when they were closing school. I hope it's going to be the same thing or it's going to be different from what they're going to give from Jinx. Are you a sixth grade parent? Yes, sixth grade parent, yes. Okay, so on Wednesday, um, you'll get that list? Okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm trying to say I already get one from the time school is closing, so I already did my shopping. So I hope say I did the right thing. I hope so too. I, I, I probably it's probably going to be very similar. Okay, but it, you know you still have some time. All right, we're still okay. in August, so whatever is not, whatever is on that list, did you get? You can you still have time to get it. Okay, it's all you know August twentieth. And so, you know, school, you know, school's going to start on August 31st, which is the last Wednesday. So you still have some time. We'll, but we'll, I, we can't wait to see you on Wednesday, you and your student. A quick question. What if um, you cannot attend the jump start for Wednesday? Well, then you can uh, certainly follow up with the teachers uh, on uh, through email. Um, if you ultimately want to, you know, tour the facility, we're available. You can come, you know, at any time, you know, um, just give us a heads up when you're going to come so we can be available for you. So how would I find, 
find out who his teachers are. Should, it should be in Skyward. Your Skyward. And account. what if we have no access to Skyward? I did reach out to the lady who emailed last week, and I have not gotten no response. Okay, so just you can email me, and and I can get you in contact with that person. I can make sure I follow, get get someone to follow up with you. All right, it's seven o'clock, seven o one. You're welcome, everyone. Thank you. Welcome, welcome to Jenks. And Excuse me. Bienvenidos uh, todos los uh, padres que están en esta eh, orientación virtual en español. Eh, vamos a comenzar dentro de unos como un par de minutos porque hay unos padres que todavía están entrando. Dr. Francisco, could I add one more thing? Yes. So, okay. Um, I just like to add that um, there's one more form that's very important that I receive that you'll be getting from the district, the over-the-counter medication form. Um, I need to get that back, so it, you would have a choice if you would like me to give your, your student medication at school. I'm talking about over-the-counter medications right now, Tylenol, Motrin, Benadryl, Tums, not prescription medications. Prescription is a whole different form. You'd have to see me. We'd have to talk about that. But if you're okay with your child having those types of over-the-counter medications at school, I need to get that form back before I can administer those medications. Okay, and the form is designed a little differently every year, so please make sure that you check off yes or no, whether you want me to give the meds at school or not, and I will respect that. Um, please make sure your student's name is on it, and please make sure you sign it, okay? And um, that was that form, one that's going to be sent out within the beginning of the school days? Yeah, you should be getting that before the first day of school, okay? That being said, I mean, if your student is coming down every day for Motrin, I'm going to let you know that just because I have permission to give it, you know, doesn't mean that I'm going to just, if there's an issue, you will still, you'll, you'll be notified when I'm giving the medication. If it's once in a great while, I'm giving it one day, I have your permission, but if it's a continuous thing, you know, then, then I'll let you know. Okay. And please make sure ready to learn. Um, I know I'm, and this is for the students as well. Please make sure that you're coming to school ready to learn means, you know, well rested that you've had some breakfast that you're ready to learn that day, healthy lifestyle choices. You know, last year I have, seems to be, I'm, I'm have seen a lot of kids falling asleep in class. So, <laughs> you know, we've got to put that social media down at night. We've got to make sure that we're getting enough rest. It's very hard to distinguish if students are, are if they're sleeping in school during a pandemic, are they sick? Did you just not get enough rest the night before? So it becomes even more of an issue. So please make sure you're showing up for school, well rested. We got the, we got two breakfast, you know, we offer breakfast twice in the morning, so you should be able to have, have had some breakfast. And all these things are really important to make sure you're ready to learn and proceed with your school day. Okay? Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of the weekend. Uh, bienvenidos, Thank padres. Uh, nosotros uh, le damos la bienvenida a esta orientación en español. Uh, ahí en la parte, mi nombre es uh, Dr. Francisco. Yo les envío los mensajes, las invitaciones. Pues gracias por estar con nosotros. Um, en la parte superior a la izquierda eh, eh, hay una foto de los estudiantes que están trabajando en grupos colaborativos. Pues nosotros creemos en um, los, los estándares. Al, o sea, eh, tenemos altas expectativas de los estudiantes. Um, por favor, antes de seguir, si puede, por favor, um, apagar su micrófono para que no haya eh, ruido en el trasfondo, por favor. Uh, ahora con nosotros tenemos uh, con nosotros la enfermera. Eh, ella es la enfermera Boragine. Ella va a hablar uh, unos minutos sobre... Ella nos va a hablar uh, ahorita. Eh, pero permíteme por favor seguir con este dispositivo. Uh, aquí está uh, el director Lazareski que él está afuera en una clase de est los estudios sociales enseñándoles, enseñándoles a los estudiantes de que, uh, sobre un, un, un juego antiguo, a uh, un romano eh, que se llama uh, Bachi. Um, Nosotros aquí, eh, usted puede ver al lado de esa foto, nosotros llevamos a cabo eh, actividades uh, para los sociales, para los estudiantes. Aquí hay un barbecue y a la derecha 
uh, hay un estudiante de pie que está eh, usando su pupitre o escritorio ajustable. Eh, es un experimento que estamos tratando de averiguar si eso le facilita a los estudiantes para mantenerse enfocados. Y sí, tenemos muchos clubes. Bueno, no muchos. Tenemos unos cuantos. Queremos más. Uh, hay deportes, hay clubes para... Um, para, eh, para los estudiantes, por ejemplo, este, para ajedrez, queremos empezar ajedrez y diferentes clases uh, de uh, ciencia, por ejemplo, para eh, pro hacer proyectos después de la escuela. Y aquí arriba, ahí está nuestra mascota ahí de la, de la escuela. Uh, eh, voy, le voy a permitir a la enfermera Uh, por allí, eh, para ver si ella puede hablar uh, sobre, déjeme apagar esto, un momento por favor, ok, bien, aquí está la enfermera Borgine, yo le voy a traducir, ok, I'll translate uh, Nurse Borgine as, as you speak, so you can speak just in phrases and I'll translate. Oh, hold on. Let me turn your mic on. Oh, you're, you're all set. Good evening, everybody. Um, Buenas noches a todos. Just wanted to touch base on a Solo few quería, things. Eh, simplemente tocar algunos uh, puntos. Uh, first of all, you'll be receiving in the, uh, before the first day of school an over-the-counter medication form that allows you... Antes del primer día usted recibirá un formulario sobre medicamento que podemos administrar dándonos permiso. A favor de asegurar de que el formulario tenga el nombre de su estudiante. Please check off yes or no if you would like me to be able to, to give your student over the counter medication at school. A favor de marcar en el formulario. Uh, con un bolígrafo, si tengo su permiso para administrar ese medicamento. Please make sure you sign the bottom. Y favor de firmar la parte inferior. I often get them back and they're not completed and then I can't, um, I can't give your children medication at school unless I have their name, your signature and your, and your check off, yes, that I can give it. Muchas veces, uh, debido a la ausencia de su firma y... y Uh, la, la falta de esa, la, la marca, uh, dándome permiso eh, de administrar el medicamento, no puedo proseguir. Uh, please make sure that I have uh, any uh, vaccin updated vaccination uh, and physical forms. Um, I, if your child goes to the doctor over the summer or during the school year and you don't bring the updated physical form and vaccination form to me, I don't have that information. Favor de traer de, de, del, medic, del, del médico uh, el, las, uh, el récord de va, las vacunas. Eso es de suma importancia porque eh, eso es parte de del, la política del distrito. Uh, también facilita mi trabajo en cuanto a la comunicación también con eh, el doctor. Ok, just a couple more things. Un par de cosas más. Please make sure that you communicate with me if your if your student's going to be out of school for any medically related reason. Uh, la otra cosa tiene que ver con um, el, el record del físico de, de estudiante, perdón. E, uh, la otra cosa es si va a estar ausente su estudiante por cualquier razón, favor de llamarme o enviarme un mensaje por correo electrónico. Um, it's much easier for me to be able to advocate for your student If, if it's a valid medical reason, if they're out of school sick um, and you're communicating with, with me on a regular basis, then we can have that, uh, that absence excused. But if I don't hear from you, I, I, can't, I can't advocate for you and your students. So please keep in touch with me. Es más, es más fácil. Es si usted um, eh, se mantenga, eh, me mantenga informado, sobre la situación, pues yo puedo trabajar con ustedes y también puedo excusar la ausencia en Skyward, o sea, para darle eh, el, el permiso para estar fuera, porque si no, entonces yo no, puedo, no lo puedo hacer. Uh, el correo electrónico de la uh, enfermera está en la pantalla, borregine 
m.psdri.net. Um, no sé si ustedes pueden ver la pantalla. Si no, está, se lo voy a escribir en el cuadro de, ch de chat. Uh, Borragine m.psdri.net. Um, cariñosamente le llamamos a ella eh, uh, nurse, nurse Maura <ríe> Maura es, es su primer nombre pero le damos el título de Nurse <ríe> como enfermera Nurse Maura Ok, y como escuela de nurse me gustaría like um, I just like to say, and, and this is also for the students as well, um, you know, that it's really important that students are coming to school ready to learn in the morning. And by ready to learn, I mean, you know, having gotten a good night's sleep the night before, um, making healthy choices. And I know I'm, we've heard it all before, and, and but, you know, it's really important. I mean, last year I had, a, I had somewhat of a problem with students falling asleep in class. And during okay. the pandemic, it's even Hola. more... Es de su importancia que eh, su estudiante en, en, para reducir el ausentismo crónico y para subir la asistencia, de que eh, su estudiante tenga suficiente, que se cuide, que tenga suficiente este, um, uh, sueño y que coma bien, que venga refrescado eh, a la escuela. Porque si no, muchas veces el estudiante se va a dormir en el mismo salón de enseñanza y eso es muy difícil para el aprendizaje y, el, y también para el, el, el maestro porque entonces el maestro me llama y me dice ah, el estudiante está durmiendo en el salón así que queremos evitar eso so please make sure that you, students make sure that you're coming to school um, well rested make sure we offer two passes for breakfast in the morning so make sure you've had something to eat you're ready to start your day por favor, estudiantes, nosotros también le ofrecemos, le brindamos uh, un, un desayuno. Así que, por favor, estudiantes, de asegurarte de que um, estás comiendo bien. And it's important that we're respecting uh, others and respecting ourselves. Y que and, uh, respetar a los demás, tanto nosotros mismos como los demás. Okay, and, uh, you know, I'm always available if... Uh, Siempre estoy disponible. If there's any medically anything medically related or meant that's mental health or physical health or anybody needs me for any reason, please. Sí, me necesiten por cualquier razón, sea por una um, cuestión a, algo uh, rel relativo a algo uh, socio uh, emocional o físico o cualquier cosa. Usted que tenga la confianza de ya, llamarme o estar en contacto, enviarme un mensaje por correo electrónico. Right. Does anybody have any questions for me? Hay una preguntas para la enfermera. Para... I don't see anything in chat. Yo, yo, perdón, yo cometí un error uh, en, el, en el cuadro de chat. Yo puse hmm, el correo electrónico la segunda vez. Borragine M. Ok. B-O-R-A-G-I-N-E-M arroba p s d r i punto n e t All right. Uh, gracias, uh, Nurse Mora. We Thank appreciate you. It. Okay, have a good weekend. You too. Bien. Um, vamos a seguir con la presentación. Bien. Um, uh, nosotros, bueno, nosotros tenemos uh, un dicho aquí en la escuela que habla sobre las expectativas. Tres cosas. Be here, behave, be a high achiever. Achiever. Básicamente dice hay que estar aquí, hay que comportarse bien y hay que tener altas expectativas. Uh, hay que alcanzar um, altas expectativas. Una pregunta. ¿Cuándo, si alguien puede quitar su micrófono, ¿cuándo es el primer día cuando comienzan las clases para este año escolar? A ver si alguien sabe. El 31 de agosto. Perfecto, excelente. Exactamente. Es el último miércoles, el 31 de agosto. Ahora, otra persona o estudiante que nos puede decir cuándo, a qué hora comienzan las clases todos los días. ¿Cuándo tiene que reportarse a las clases? 
a la escuela, perdón. Otra persona. Quizá necesita ayuda para quitar su micrófono. ¿Alguien? ¿Hay, ¿Hay estudiantes aquí hoy? ¿Cuándo, a qué hora comienza la escuela? ¿Alguien? A las 8 a.m. Excelente. Los dos van a recibir una A para este día. Excelente. A las 8. Así que en la mañana, posiblemente los estudiantes que llegan después de las 8, a las 8 y 5, a las 8 y 10, 8 y 15, me, escuch me escucharán diciendo en inglés, school starts at 8, so don't be late. School starts at 8, so don't be late. Eso rima, no en español. La escuela comienza a las 8, así que no llegues tarde. Eso no rima, ¿verdad? Pero, así que, por favor, estamos tratando de eh, llegar a tiempo a, a, a todas las clases y venir todos los días. Ok. Ahora vamos a la próxima página. Padres, necesitamos su participación. Esta es la presidenta del grupo de padres. Y PAC, P-A-C, quiere decir Parent Advisory Committee, el comité uh, de padres. Y ella tiene un mensaje en inglés uh, aquí. Um, Queremos que ustedes sean miembros porque hay uh, información de los padres, del grupo de padres, que ellos suben, ellos siempre están descargando eh, mensajes. Ahí, pero les puedo tocar este mensaje. I'm Phoebe, the president of the Parent Advisory Committee. Our committee is here to represent you, the parents, and family of our Joseph Jenks Middle School students. The committee meets every other Monday at 5.30 p.m. And usually the information is broadcast through emails and phone calls a few days prior to the meeting dates. We're looking for parent participation. So hoping to see everyone join the meetings. We are also open to feedback, questions, and if you are interested in joining the parent leadership panel, please contact the school. You can reach out to Dr. Francisco You can also email us directly or reach out via social media. Um, so we are looking forward to seeing everyone in our upcoming meetings. Thank you. Muy bien, gracias, Presidenta Phoebe. Um, yeah, la, la, la participación de los padres es de, su, de suma importancia. Nosotros queremos que todos los padres um, sean partícipes de las decisiones de nuestra escuela. Um, eso fue una de las cosas que los padres dijeron en la, la cuesta. Bueno, oh, perdón, déjame quitar esto. Ok, ya. Yeah. Um, bien. Um, ella dijo que ellos tenían reuniones cada... pero eso puede, o a las 5, eso puede cambiar. Necesitamos su voz. Ustedes mismos como padres tienen que decidir cuándo quieren llevar a cabo qué día y a qué horas. Quizá usted quiere hacer las reuniones de vez en cuando en la mañana, ¿eh? en, la, en, en la noche o en la tarde, ¿eh? Así que, o los fines de semana, quién sabe. Um, bien, si quieren ser parte de este comité, favor de enviarnos un mensaje por correo electrónico o llamarnos. ¿Cómo se puede mantenerse informado? Bueno, nosotros tenemos nuestra página de la escuela. Eh, pueden escribir josephjenks.bramjam.com. Es esta es nueva, la nueva página. Y ustedes pueden encontrar uh, videos. Aquí están los enlaces. 
de, 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 de calendario. Tenemos que actualizar todo antes del primer día, claro que eso es por cierto. Um, pero hay muchas cosas aquí que ustedes pueden acceder. Uh, por ejemplo, el formulario de almuerzo que les envié el enlace hace unos, unas dos semanas atrás. Pero aquí la pueden encontrar también. Um, hay un video aquí de parte de los, de los, de los estudiantes. Eh, ¿Cuántos estudiantes están con nosotros en esta noche? Si puede quitar su micrófono, decirme su nombre. ¿Solo hay padres? Bueno. Quisiera tocar este video. Este video fue producido por los mismos uh, estudiantes, así que ojalá que lo disfruten. But don't worry, we're going to talk about how to be successful at Jake's Post School. You'll do just fine at being a degree. Follow us. seguir. Uh, la otra manera en que, bueno, vamos a ver si ustedes, a ver si alguien tiene cualquier pregunta. Uh, ¿Alguien tiene cualquier pregunta? Um, tengo una pregunta. Adelante. Um, ¿Ellos todavía van a seguir usando las mascarillas en la escuela o ya no? Es opcional. Oh, ok. No es mandatorio. Ah, oh, ok, está bien, gracias. Una buena pregunta. ¿Ustedes, um, um, ¿ustedes les gustaron el video? ¿Les, les gustó? 
Sí, estaba viendo que no se estaba viendo nada. Oh, no vieron nada. ¿Por qué no me dijeron? Perdón. Pues yo vi de el que estaba en inglés, fue el que estaba viendo hace un rato, pero ahorita solo se oía el ruido. Oh, ok, lo siento. No, es ahí. Ah, la próxima vez, si alguien me puede rápidamente decir, hey, doctor Francisco, mira, no, no, no podemos ver nada, no, no, no escuchamos nada. Ay, perdón. Ok. Bueno, tenemos uh, nuestra página de, como les dije, de Facebook. Ustedes pueden acceder eh, y ser miembro de este. Voy a copiar y pegar eh, el, el enlace para no. nuestra página aquí mismo en la. Ahí, ahí está en el cuadro de chat. A ver si salió. Ahí. ¿Entró? Sí. Ahí está. De Facebook. Ah, la otra herramienta eh, de los medios sociales que nosotros, nosotros usamos es uh, Twitter. Uh, Twitter es, muchas veces nosotros vamos a rápidamente dar un anuncio rápido de lo que está pasando actualmente en la escuela. Um, y aquí está twitter.com Jenks MS1 es la, la dirección. Okay. Usted puede ser miembro también esa página uh, bien y pueden por supuesto ir a la página del distrito escolar, ustedes pueden ver en la pantalla eh, psdri.net sí ok, y en la, la última uh, herramienta que usamos es una eh, un anuncio una página de anuncios ok, como forma de una carta de una, una sola página que se llama S'mores, ok. Bien, uh, ok, vamos a ver ahora. Los administradores, ¿quiénes somos nosotros? Bueno, aquí eh, a la izquierda, ahí está nuestro director Lazareski, señor Lazareski. En el medio está el subdirector Loporo y yo soy también eh, ahora eh, uno de los subdirectores encargado de la cultura escolar y el compromiso comunitario. Yo, yo, eh, él, es, él, él es chistoso, este, Love Boro, él es, uh, siempre se ríe mucho con los estudiantes, él trata de conectarse con ellos y, y le, ayu, eh, le ayuda mucho a, a, a cualquier estudiante, si sea necesario. Uh, y usa estas corbatas uh, bien uh, chistosas, uh, con muchos colores y pero les digo también um, la realidad de, la, de, de su función él es eh, un disciplinario a veces por ejemplo si hay una emergencia un, un muchacho que está corriendo por posiblemente en el pasillo y está en peligro verdad uh, pues él a veces él tiene que subir su voz um, y yo, mi rol es uh, más bien, no trato mucho con la cuestión de la disciplina. Quizás este año más voy a tratar más con la disciplina, pero yo, uh, en mi rol, yo, yo estoy encargado de la asistencia de los estudiantes, este, también las comunicaciones. Eh, ustedes recibirán muchos mensajes de mi parte. Uh, también el compromiso de los padres y la comunidad. Ok. Uh, ¿Cuál? Hay tres, hay tres eh, expectativas que le comunicamos a, a, lo, uh, les comunicamos a los estudiantes. En inglés, it's be here, behave, be a high achiever. Ok. Como quiere decir be here, hay que estar aquí. Que, uh, o sea, en la escuela. Hay que asistir a la escuela. Um, ¿Y qué quiere decir? Eh, nuestro plan por escrito, um, claro que no, nosotros, nosotros, el enfoque central es el, um, el logro académico, pero eh, específicamente en la matemática y también el, en, en el inglés. Pero también... Uno de nuestros objetivos es bajar 
el ausentismo crónico. Ahora mismo, el año pasado, nuestro, voy, voy a hablar más adelante sobre, sobre eso, pero en esencia, be here quiere decir que no tenga más de una ausencia por mes. ¿Ok? Uh, o cuando lleguemos al último día del año escolar, en junio, que no tenga su estudiante eh, más de 17 ausencias. ¿okay? O sea, ausencias sin excusa uh, médica. Cuando, o sea, cuando va a estar ausente, ¿qué es lo que debe el estudiante debe hacer o los padres? Bueno, hay que enviarle un correo electrónico a todos los maestros y puede enviarles un solo mensaje y, y escribir todos los correos electrónicos de los, de los profesores en un solo mensaje y también la enfermera. Hay que llegar temprano. La clase comienza a las 8, así que no lleguen tarde. Uh, bien, eh, tocando este, este eh, la cuestión de llegar tarde, hemos tenido que uh, bregar con este problema con una minoría de los estudiantes que llegan tarde y cuando, es, cuando hagamos una conferencia eh, preguntándoles, ¿por qué llegas tarde? Dice, ah, yo estoy, yo, dependo de mi mamá, dependo de mi papá, así que, o oh, dependo de mis hermanos para levantarme. Pero estamos tratando de desarrollar uh, las destrezas de poder ejercer la independencia. Así que, por favor, querido estudiante, eh, hay que usar un reloj despertador. Muchas veces los estudiantes dicen, ah, yo uso mi celular, pero <ríe> muchas veces el celular falla porque está, está uh, descargado, descar el teléfono descargado. Entonces, lo que les recomendamos es que compren un reloj despertador que se enchufle en, en, la, en la pared y que no lo pongan al lado en la mesa de noche, sino en el otro lado de la cama, en el otro lado de la, la habitación. ¿Por qué? Porque entonces cuando comienza a sonar, el estudiante, tú tienes que, como estudiante, tienes que le, a, levantarte de la cama, plantear la, lo, los pies en, en el piso y cuando eso comienza a como fluir la sangre, los músculos, ya, ya puede despertarse mejor, llegar temprano a, a la clase, a la escuela. Eh, ok, be here, behave, be high achieve. Esta es la, la segunda expectativa. Nosotros tenemos una política, queridos padres estudiantes, que ponga, eh, vamos a tener en todas las puertas de los salones Uh, ¿Sabe? Es, es, um, es como el estuche de donde se ponen los zapatos, es algo semejante. Pero en este caso vamos a tener eh, bolsillos, estuches ahí en la, en la puerta donde cada estudiante va a poner su celular. Y um, dice la segunda parte aquí abajo, hay que usar es, el celular respons con responsabilidad responsablemente, solo durante el paseo de clases, intermedio de la clase y también durante el almuerzo. Creemos que eso es justo, de esa manera eh, el, el, los estudiantes pueden enfocarse mejor en sus estudios y es un asunto de seguridad también porque hay muchas como distracciones de pleitos en los medios sociales. Uh, hay que tratar a los demás como uno quisiera ser tratado. ¿verdad? Um, la, la regla de oro. Y hay que usar una voz tranquila, con calma, hay que hablar con calma, tanto con los estudiantes como con los profesores. La última, uh, y no es, no es quiere decir que eso es menos de, de las otras expectativas, es simplemente eh, tiene un rima bien. Be here, behave, be a high achiever. Be a high achiever quiere decir que logre lo mejor. Lo, hay que preguntar, querido estudiante, hay que hacer, hacerle por lo menos una sola pregunta por cada clase, en cada clase. Eso le va a facilitar la enseñanza. ¿ve? O pídele ayuda de, de, de otra persona. ¿Por qué? 
eso va a, te va a ayudar a aprender mejor. Y eso no quiere decir que tiene que seguir preguntándole al profesor. No, no, no. Pregúntale a la persona que está a tu lado. En, en, porque nosotros usamos um, grupos uh, cooperativos de aprendizaje. Así que, y eso le va a ayudar a los demás en el grupo para también cuando te escuchan uh, haciéndole la pregunta, ellos mismos dicen, ah, es verdad. Uh, ¿Cómo? Porque muchas veces los estudiantes es, uh, es una destreza en sí as, haciendo preguntas. Haz tu tarea. Enfóquete toda la, la atención en la tarea o en la asignatura que está uh, ahí en su escritorio o en la pantalla. Y ayúdale a, a ayúdales a otros a, a aprender. Esto va a cristalizar el aprendizaje. Cuando uno aprende algo, es muy difícil de, de desaprender, de, 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 de borrar eso de, de su... De, de su uh, aprendizaje. Ok, padres, hay formularios muy importantes. El formulario de emergencia. Hay que um, asignar, asignarle a, a una persona uh, para venir a recoger su estudiante cuando usted no puede venir. ¿ves? Pero si esa persona no está en el formulario, pues no, nosotros no podemos um, entregar su estudiante a esa persona. La otra cosa es que hay una affidavit de su dirección que hay que uh, comprobar de que usted y confirmar que usted vive aquí en Potoque. Y uh, todos los estudiantes, nosotros tenemos su permiso para usar sus fotos y sus videos y uh, uh, subir o, uh, esas fotos a nuestras páginas en los medios sociales oh, y, y podemos usar los videos y las fotos para uh, los asuntos de asuntos educativos. Pero si usted no quiere que tengamos ese permiso, hay que firmar lo que se llama opt out, optar fuera. Eso quiere decir out, fuera, que no puede. Uh, la otra cosa que ustedes recibieron el formulario de almuerzo en línea, favor de firmar. Uh, no, hay, hay personas que creen que, bueno, si yo firmo, si yo lleno eso, eh, la migración va a estar. Algunos padres me, 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 me dijeron esto en el pasado o expresaron, ah, yo tengo miedo de que si yo lleno ese formulario, eh, sabe que nuestro estatus aquí, no, nosotros somos gente indocumentada. Entonces, no, nosotros tuvimos incluso un taller con el, el juez, abogado juez uh, uh, Cardona, y por una hora y media a los padres, fue un taller, fue invitado y, no, y, nos, y nos habló claramente de que no, um, esa comunicación no está... Este, no se le entrega eso a, 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 a las autoridades. Eso es incluso contra la ley. Uh, nosotros recibimos cada escuela eh, o cada formulario que recibimos uh, de los padres, nosotros recibimos fondos adicionales del gobierno federal. Así que cuando si no recibimos su formulario, pues ya nuestra escuela no recibe sus fondos. Y eso necesitamos eh, los fondos. Eso es una escuela que estamos, sabe, hay muchas necesidades. Y queremos dar lo mejor a los estudiantes. Um, OK, aquí, aquí está eh, en nuestra página de, 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 de nuestra escuela en línea. Uh, aquí está nuestra eh, nuestro formulario de almuerzo aquí a la izquierda es bien fácil es bien fácil y no no le va a tomar mucho tiempo simplemente puede uh, poner su código postal a uh, 02860 uh, y no no le va a tomar mucho tiempo puede eh, escribir aquí begin application process y comienza a simplemente contestar las preguntas claro que puede um, poner esto en español aquí, ¿eh? en la parte de arriba, idioma, y pueden seguir llenando el formulario. Eso es muy importante. Uh, la, la última cosa que nosotros tenemos, lo que se llama un, un pacto escolar, un, una, ¿qué es un pacto? Es un acuerdo. 
es simplemente, es, va a ser muy fácil, de una sola página con unos puntos. Como escuela nosotros le prometemos hacer esto, como eh, el personal nosotros le prometemos esto, como padres le prometemos esto. Entonces ustedes recibirán eso por correo electrónico, ustedes simplemente tienen que leerlo y decir, confirmar que sí en formulario. He leído el formulario, estoy de acuerdo. Simplemente es marcando un cuadri, un, una cosita, un cuadro. Y bueno, ahora queremos hablar sobre la asistencia. Esto es nuestro, nuestro objetivo que está dentro de nuestro plan para mejorar la escuela. Saben ustedes que nuestra escuela está bajo una intervención estatal. Eso quiere decir que el gobierno estatal debido a que la mayoría de los estudiantes no han alcanzado suficiente eh, logro académico en los exámenes estatales o en las ricas, nosotros estamos siendo supervisados y por eh, eh, el Estado. Nosotros queremos salir de esa, ese estatus. Creemos que podemos con su ayuda. Pues una de nuestras um, metas es reducir el ausentismo crónico. Esto fue, um, esto es un, un gráfico de uh, nuestro, nuestro, el ausentismo crónico cada mes, desde septiembre del año pasado hasta junio. Y no es, es aceptable. 35% de nuestros estudiantes están ausentes ausente 10% o más. O quiere decir dos veces al mes o más. Y eso le va a afectar su... Uh, educación y además de eso que no pueden lograr claro que hay una co uh, correlación entre la asistencia y el logro académico si, entonces si no están aquí ¿ve? no pueden eh, alcanzar un nivel académico si sí, no pueden alcanzar su potencial entonces también cuando van tomando los exámenes estatales reciben este Uh, uh, bajas uh, calificaciones entonces necesitamos su ayuda necesitamos ser este socios en este en este sentido así que por favor um, que eh, que nos ayudes uh, en la política del distrito en cuanto a la asistencia ustedes pueden ir a nuestro a la página de distrito escolar perdón, distrito escolar y dice que um, la, el distrito escolar no le apoya las vacaciones extendidas ok y así que el calendario tiene todos los días eh, de los días feriados Así que, por favor, que planifiquen con anticipación, por favor. Los directores, como directores, nosotros no podemos darle permiso a, a las familias para que estén fuera, ¿ve? Uh, Así que tomen eso en, en consideración. Ahora, yo les voy a hablar francamente. Ustedes van a hacer lo que ustedes quieren hacer um, en ese sentido, pero le estamos pidiendo ese, 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 por favor, que tomen nuestra meta en consideración. Uh, vamos a suponer, como dije al, uh, al principio, si en junio, eh, el último día de junio, tiene menos de 17 ausencias, pues eso no, no cuenta eh, como una estadística. Cuando es más de 17, ya hay un problema. Ya eso es una estadística permanente. So, así que si usted sabe de que, bueno, mi estudiante nunca ha estado ausente, eh, pues vamos a tomar un par de días, tiene cero ausencias, pero vamos a tomar unos días, pues ustedes tienen que tomar esa decisión, y, pero tomen, que nos tomen en cuenta. Uh, ya ustedes hablaron con la enfermera, ahí está su correo electrónico, a favor de enviarle un mensaje por correo electrónico a ella o llámala y decir, mire, mi hijo tiene un, una cita médica, es mejor por correo electrónico, porque 
muchas veces la enfermera está con estudiantes, pero sí, es algo de emergencia y puede hablar con ella, porque muchas veces ella está hablando por teléfono con padres sobre asuntos muy importantes. Imagínate, esa señora, esa enfermera tiene que bregar con mil, mil personas en un complejo, o sea, el, el complejo entero, porque hay una escuela secundaria también que GMW se llama. Y ellos tienen sus propios estudiantes, más el personal. Ok, desde el sexto grado hasta el duodécimo grado. Querido estudiante, por favor, escriban estas, estos nombres. Estos son sus orientadores, sus consejeros personales de guianza. Uh, en inglés se llama, se llama guidance counsel o orientador. Uh, le recomendamos que estén, que tengan una conversación con ellos, sea con, con, con ellos, sea uh, por correo electrónico o en persona. E, si, ellos tienen su puerta abierta. Muchas veces la, lo, mucho, la mayoría de los estudiantes yo he aprendido, observado que ellos no, no los conocen, pero deben por lo menos tener su correo electrónico y los padres tampoco saben cuando hay un problema en el salón. No deben ir directamente al al director o los subdirectores deben primeramente al, al profesor. Ahora, si hay un problema que el profesor no puede resolver, entonces la próxima persona es, son estas dos personas. Estos son los orientadores, porque entonces ellos le van a guiar. Ellos son las personas que también um, coordinan eh, el horario, qué clases que, que los muchachos van a tomar. Uh, vamos a suponer que la clase es demasiado fácil. Ya estoy, ya tengo casi dos meses en una clase y yo tengo una A más. Yo tengo 100 en esa clase. Yo, estoy, yo puedo dormir y, y sacar una A. Así que yo quiero una clase más avanzada. Entonces ellos son la gente con quien debes hablar. Ellos están ahí, trabazos y A, arroba psdri.net y rihani j, arroba psdri.net. Ok, Boys Town, New England. Esto es una, es un, um, un, una relación uh, especial que nosotros tenemos, un acuerdo que tenemos con esta organización. Esta señora uh, uh, se llama uh, Paloma Goico y ella es, ella, ella, es dominic uh, ella, ella habla español. Uh, sus padres yo creo que vienen de la, la República Dominicana si no me equivoco. Um, ella trabaja para bajar los comportamientos negativos y aumentar los, um, lo, eh, el comportamiento positivo en Jenks. Eh, ella es lo que se llama School Support Specialist, especialista en apoyo escolar. Ella trabaja uno a uno con los estudiantes, también uh, su organización trabaja con nosotros para darnos talleres y también para ustedes, ellos van a brindar talleres, ojalá que sean mensuales, uh, con um, como eh, diferentes temas o tópicos que ellos van a uh, brindar. Eh, y ella está en nuestra, ella tiene su oficina en nuestra escuela, ella va a tratar lo mejor posible usando el, 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 su pericia o, o su entren, um, ella está entrenida en, um, en eh, técnicas, um, uh, estrategias, estra cosas estratégicas um, en cuanto a comportamiento. ¿Qué podemos hacer para cambiar cosas negativas de nuestros hijos, de los, los estudiantes? Um, bien. Eh, ahora, ¿cómo se puede mantenerse informado en cuanto al progreso académico de su estudiante? Estudiantes, por favor, ustedes tienen su propio, propia cuenta de Skyward. Padres, por favor, que no usen la cuenta de sus hijos. Ustedes tienen su propia este, uh, aplicación. Ustedes pueden descargar la aplicación de Skyward a su teléfono e elegir uh, un, eh, cuatro, cuatro dígitos para entrar en su cuenta. Eh, si no tiene acceso, no tienen sus credenciales para entrar, su usuario, su contraseña, pues no, me pueden, eh, nos pueden uh, enviar un mensaje por correo electrónico o llamar a 729-6520 a hablar con nuestra, nuestras secretarias. Eh, ¿Por qué esto es importante? Esto, la, la, su, 
su, uh, su cuenta de Skyward de padres tiene mucho más información que tiene la, uh, su hijo. Eh, lo que usted tiene es, no solo tiene el, el, los informes de progreso, tienen los informes de las calificaciones, tienen todos los cursos, tienen todos los profesores, el nombre de ellos, tienen todas las asignaturas, todas las tareas, todo está ahí, hasta la disciplina, lo que los informes de disciplina y la asistencia. Uh, usted puede configurar uh, Skyward para que te envíe mensajes um, a su correo electrónico uh, sobre cualquier o sea, mensaje de, de los profesores, tanto los mensajes como los profesores, como eh, de, por, por ejemplo, un informe del progreso de su estudiante. Ahora, eso es todo lo que yo tengo para esta noche, pero yo quisiera escuchar su retroalimentación, sus pensamientos. Uh, ahora mismo, no sé si usted es padre y estudiante que están regresando, yo quisiera escuchar ahora mismo algunas cosas positivas de Jenks para los padres que está, son padres y estudiantes nuevos. Pero no se me vayan tampoco, porque voy a poner en el cuadro de chat, voy a poner eh, un enlace, les voy a hacer, eh, les voy a plantear dos preguntas, ¿ok? Uno, si esta reunión fue útil. ¿Y qué podemos hacer mejor la próxima vez? Ok, por favor, vayan a, a su, al lado de chat. Aquí. Pueden hacer clic ahí. Bien, uh, mientras ustedes están uh, llenando este formulario, por favor, eh, pueden quitar su micrófono y quisiera escuchar algunas de sus preguntas, sus comentarios. Tenemos... Seis minutos, ah, uh, ocho minutos. ¿Cuántas personas están regresando del año pasado? ¿Algunos estudiantes, padres? ¿Todos son nuevos aquí? Tengo uno, dos, tres, cuatro personas. Muy bien, si no tienen ninguna pregunta o ningún comentario, yo quería escuchar su voz, pero si no tienen las ganas de hablar y, no, y son todos nuevos, pues eh, recuerden que el miércoles, este miércoles que viene, todos los padres y los estudiantes de sexto grado, ustedes tienen un compromiso con nosotros a las 10 de la mañana um, en persona, en la escuela. Solamente las familias de sexto grado, los nuevos estudiantes de sexto grado, eh, van a conocer sus profesores, van a recibir la lista de cosas que tienen que comprar, um, van a hacer un, una caminata por la facilidad. Bueno, yo soy doctor Francisco, usted tiene mi número, mi uh, correo electrónico y también, ustedes saben, me pueden llamar también en cualquier momento. Y estoy aquí para servirlas. Así que que tengan una buena noche y un buen fin de semana. Igualmente, muchas gracias. Adiós.